um, materials taken from Lamsas, as I said before, the data collection for what I'll use was all done between 1933 and about 1939. The overall set went, took a bit longer. Uh, most of it was connected by Lohman. Um, most of the analyses that I've seen, and one that I did earlier was based on lexical overlap. I think uh, I'd like to plug Bill Kretschmar here because uh, he makes this data available publicly. I think that's something that I'd like to hear a lot more people doing. We're also doing with Dutch and German dialect data that we're collecting in Groningen. It means you could check our analyses. I'd love to check some of yours if I could get your data. It would be a good thing for science, I think, if we share data a lot more. This is, I think, a really good thing. I'm going to restrict it to um, Lohmann's data. The reason for restricting it to Lohmann is that there really are transcriber effects. I'm still out here for a little bit on this, but it's, uh, it's something that I'm, I'm fighting with a bit. And really, unless there's a lot of data, I don't know what to do with it. I can do something with Lohmann and McDavid, but the small uh, sets due to other transcribers are pretty tough to deal with. Now, I've added states in there that not everyone will recognize as south, but I'll give you a map of what that is. You can see it. This is the area that I'll look at, um, so including Maryland, and Delaware, Washington, D.C., and that's partly to see uh, the, exist the degree to which the, uh, the, the uh, south comes out. This is just to tell you that the, the data is in pretty good shape. Um, I read a pretty simple little parser to, to get through the phonetic strings, and it's, it's getting nearly 100% correct. It's unusual in big data sets, and after all, we're talking about uh, nearly 60,000 phonetic strings just for this limited set. It's not the whole data set, but just for this, uh, these six uh, areas. Um, some figures on it, um, it's 238 locations. Um, I think you want something like this uh, technique for comparing sounds in general, um, and not just eyeballing data and saying the same or different, when you reflect that there are 1,132 different vowel types just in those six states. So if you count up the number of different combinations of base segment specifications and diacritics, you get 1,132 different sounds. I'm going to ignore all the consonants, including, um, well, I call it a consonant R, but the lab just doesn't. But all those things I'm going to ignore, including uh, uh, the, the yuck, so the yuck, the R, and the L. Um, OK, now here's a, a first picture of, uh, that I get from, uh, from doing this. I'm assuming that you've seen cluster maps before and that you know what they are. So I'm seeing a kind of northern border area. This is going to come out fairly. Uh, frequently in almost every technique that I use in a kind of eastern Virginia area and then a, 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 an area further in the south. I don't know about you, but I, um, when I, I look at this as being just a result of, or the only result of the analysis, I do get impatient, uh, like a lot of you, because I, I, a lot of you don't feel that you go from one dialect area to another by taking a giant step, right? There's, there's something else that's, that's going on there. It's not a matter of just uh, identifying a border. It's uh, something a lot um, more gradual than that. But it is a, an indication, by the way, a non-trivial indication that the techniques are working fairly well. There's no assumption being built into the techniques that any kind of geographic coherence should be present in the results. But it is present. That's already a first reflection that we're on the right track. Now, here's a way of, of doing it a bit differently. A cluster technique we've just developed and we defended at a, a recent uh, pattern recognition conference we started reclustering things under noise conditions. And that's because clustering is a great technique to get an idea what you're doing, but it's what the physicists call unstable. Little changes in the input data can be big changes in the results. Right? Unlike things like equations for, for speed or something like that, which aren't like that. Little differences in input don't make huge differences in the output. It does here. So we've added lots of noise at different levels, random noise, and that corrects for instability. And it gives us what I hope is a useful new picture something we've developed here. Uh, it's, always, it's always tough to project things. But anyway, what you can see here roughly is that we are still finding a, a north-south border that is between West Virginia and Virginia on the one hand. And we're seeing a lot of noise along the coast. And not too much else, actually, in this picture. <clears throat> a more interesting thing to do is to reduce the dimensionality for multidimensional scaling. This is a stable technique. It's extracting the most significant dimensions of variation. And I think that this is a fairly honest picture in the sense that um, I've drawn a little polygon around every data um, site, every place it was, it was collected, and I filled it in, uh, coloring uh, the, uh, the, the polygon around the site by the, using the three dimensions uh, that multidimensional scaling gives me. Again, I think that the main 
points that you saw in the cluster map here come out, that is, there's a, a Eastern Virginia area, there's a Northern area, and there's, there's, there's the rest. Um, but what in addition comes out here, I believe, is that the rest is quite varied. Right? It's not a particularly uh, cohesive area. That surprised me a bit. You get another sense of it, and this may be a sense of like, the uh, other techniques that are available. We wanted to, to try to reduce the noise that we were seeing in that. So what we took is the, the results of the clustering in this so-called dendrogram. And the dendrogram gives you a new measure of distance between places. It reduces noise quite a bit if you look at those. So now I'm going to, regardless of distance between A and B, not the original one I cal calculated, but the one that the dendrogram gives me, so-called cophonetic uh, uh, distance. And I'm going to reanalyze that through MDS. And that gives me a much uh, more, well, a, a much uh, more peaceful sort of picture at any rate. I think this is a, a useful way of, uh, of looking at the data that we've got so far. Now, uh, the last, oh yeah, one thing is clear is that I'm, I'm basically extracting contrast from the data. So it makes a big difference um, how much I put in. I, I eliminate the uh, Delaware and Maryland from the data set and I get a, a rather different picture emphasizing more the contrast. In particular here, the uh, western part of North Carolina um, turns out to look uh, quite different in, this, uh, in the second picture. That, that was muted by the fact that I included distinctions that are made in the north in the first picture. Now, I'm going to just make my, my, uh, my kind of uh, overall point that I can aggregate, and that's an interesting thing to do, but, but also that I don't have to aggregate at the full level. I don't have to look at the entire pronunciation. This I've just looked at vowels. It's not much more difficult to aggregate at the, at the full level. It means characterizing all the consonants as well. Um, but that's a that's a, a first sort of result. Um, I thought just it would be interesting for you to see what lapsus looks like in terms that you're more familiar with. So this is uh, what lapsus tells you is the pronunciation of a versus i. So the very dark areas are the uh, the i uh, pronunciation of light or uh, words like that. I haven't looked in a particular um, phonetic context for this. Okay. Um, but as you see, it's nothing like the, the very neat pictures that we get. I think it's a, a fairly uh, mixed picture here. Of course, from the 1930s, a lot of the discussions of the last couple of days are focused on uh, what it looks like in the, uh, in the last 10 years or so. Uh, but it's, it's anything but um, a, a smooth line or even a gradual line that uh, moves from an I pronunciation to an A pronunciation. Okay, the, the, there is a, a kind of uh, inland area where the A is quite frequent. And, um, okay, but, but it's rather different from the areas we can, we can uh, characterize if we're looking at aggregates. That's, that's the reason I want to show the map, is that it's not a very neat picture if you look at the individual feature and you look at a lot of data. Of course, you don't look at much data. You almost always get these pictures. Um, a better picture, actually, is the uh, diphthongization. So this is the uh, also lambsus again, where I've just colored um, the polygons dark if they have a diphthongal pronunciation of the a. And I took all the data again. I didn't restrict myself to particular phonetic context. And this is this is actually pretty good. This is about as good as it gets, really, in, uh, looking at individual features. You see, there really is a north-south distinction on this in the lambsus data. 